This is the story of a farm and its environs. The farm was founded over a century ago. Then the railroad came through and the town and farm prospered. Generations were raised here and life was good. Slowly though, things began to change. Then that pace skyrocketed. Farms got bigger and corporate. And the railroad, instead of carrying crops and goods produced here to markets near and far, began to carry goods made far away through here to places beyond. The family farm couldn't compete with the giants and most of the family left to build their lives elsewhere. The farm was abandoned and overtaken by nature. This is the introduction to my entry into the Walters Model Railroad Build-Off 2022. I was disappointed I missed it last year when I got back into modeling, but vowed not to miss it if it came around again. And I had a whole plan of what I would build if it did. Well, it's here, and I'm entering not with the idea I came up with last year, but a brand new vision inspired by one of the selections, down on the farm. I'm going to tell the story of this farm and its community. I have a general idea of what I want to do, but I need a detailed plan before I start building. So I started by making some rough sketches, then I worked with paper dolls in full scale, and then I built these rough cardboard buildings to get that third dimension and see how things fit together. Now I can set out creating some designs. Now it was time to design. I was a little apprehensive because after all, you only get one shot. So I used a variation of an ideation technique I've used before. I essentially made myself produce 10 different variations of the design. Now that kind of takes the pressure off because you're not making one that has to be perfect. You're just making 10 and any one of those can just be bad, good, whatever. You can just be, you know, going through the motions, but eventually you start to, to, uh, get the flow and you get some good designs out of it. So that's what I did. I went through 10 designs and now we're going to go through them and sort them down to the one I like the best. The first one out is number four. The buildings all face the center of the diorama, making every view a backside, and the track is too far to the side. Then it's number seven. The track is too far to the side, and in front of the building, there's no parking or entry area at the top of the elevation. Then number two, there's not much interest from the right side. Number three has a lack of interest from the left side, and the right side is far too much aligned with the edge of the diorama. Number eight falls off next. There's a lack of interest from the left side. Number one, the track is too far to the rear and the siding is pretty short. Number five falls off next. There's a lack of interest from the left side, but I do like the length of the siding. Number six is out next. The left side is a little lacking. There's no elevation, but I do like the separation of the siding. Number nine is the next to fall. It's not as refined as number 10. Number 10 is the one I wound up liking the most and is the one I'm going to go with. Building off of design 10, I decided to curve the main line sooner to give more room for overgrowth on the siding and move the switch off the diorama. Then we added more overgrowth on the siding and between the siding and the main line. Then I added a creek down at the bottom of the embankment and woods around the farm. Here's a comparison between the first concept and the final one. Some things to note. The track is far more featured in the final one. The farm is not as cramped. The factory is more expansive and there's more landscaping overall. I think it was a good effort. And now for the obligatory unboxing. There it is. I'm sure that'll work out fine. I'll be documenting the progress right here. So, if you're interested, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Herbie, you think we'll get this straightened out? Oh, you're going to sleep on it. Brilliant.